It has now been a little over two years since the last Papa's game came out, but after all this time we finally have another game to add to our collection. Say hello to Papa's Paletteria, which I will be saying to the best of my ability through the rest of this video. If you're like me, you're a bit unfamiliar with the term, but paletterias are actually real. Take that, Cluckeria! A paletteria is a popsicle place, essentially. If you've seen my first ever ranking video on these games, then you know the dessert games are typically my favorite. And as always, this game costs $2 right up front. So today, our goal is to find out how the newest game in the Papa series compares to the rest, and if it's worth the price. Let's get started. I always get so excited to see the story for each game. This time around, one lucky customer can win the 24 karat gold Palata Pendant. And lucky you, it's all yours. But wait, a rogue sea lion loves Palatas and steals the family jewels. Don't you just, don't you just hate it when that happens? Very responsibly, Papa Louie sets out to hunt down the sea lion. I think Papa's got some ideas about a new ingredient, if you know what I'm saying. Papa seems so kind until you realize he's left the key to the Palateria to you. Who would have thought? Our protagonists this time around are Hacky Zack and Lizel. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of either, but Lizel is the one on the app icon, so I thought it just made the most sense to choose her. I usually make my own custom one, but for the video, I just went with Lizel. Our first ever customer in the game is Kahuna. I'm used to this guy being a closer, so I was a little surprised to see him first. Here is each station and how they work. At the build station, you choose the mold shape and three fillings. Officially, they're called creams and chunks, but uh, I think I'd rather call them fillings instead. From there is the chill station, basically the opposite of the typical grill station. You simply wait for the paleta to chill. Lastly, the top station. It's by far the most complex, requiring you to make the correct angle before dipping it in the drizzle or toppings. The result is super satisfying though, resulting in one heck of a beautiful paleta. And that's it. There's no sides or drinks, your whole focus is on the Palatas, which is pretty nice. Very similar to something like Freezeria. At the end of our first day, we have a returning minigame. I'm being told to shoot the baddies? Trust me, there's some baddies in the Papa's games, but I don't see any here. I got a few decorations and moved right into our second day. Vanilla wafers are here just in time for Perry to visit. We also got to see Mandy, Zoe, and our first closer, Raleigh. It's an interesting choice, although I definitely get Can I Speak to the Manager vibes from them. There's also different molds to try, and I was especially curious about the smiley face one. I surprisingly did pretty bad this time. I wasn't even sure what I did wrong. It's such a simple game I was caught off guard by such a low score. I had to actually rewatch my footage to catch the mistake. Let me play the clip for you here. I made a fatal error while crafting this paleta. Did you see it? Unless you've played the game and experienced this for yourself, I kinda doubt it. Some of the flavors come in chunks and creams. Sounds like my kind of Friday night. But the only indication of the difference is in the shape of the icon. Chunks are pentagons and creams are circular. I find that very, very dumb and easily confusing, especially for a little kid like me. I've definitely learned from my mistake though, and it ain't happening again. Burgerzilla is the next returning minigame, and I've always enjoyed this one, so I definitely don't mind. On day three, we got some orange cream and were visited by Budwin, Kingsley, Mitch, and our brand new closer, Ali Kabam. I like her style. A lot of people are gonna be a fan of hers, I think. We got our first special recipe too, a very easy blueberry filled popsicle. Then we have uh, Blender Ball. I hate Blender Ball. Always requires such specific timing. Any game with Blender Ball is not allowed in S tier. All right, just kidding, but I really do hate it. From there, we really start to get in the groove of things, so I don't think it's really necessary to go day by day from here. The new customers that showed up in the meantime are Bruno Romano, Amiria, Marty, Rudy, Lisa, Ivy, Quinn, Chuck, Kayla, Alan, Franco, and Yuko. If any of those customers are your favorite, then good news, you get them nice and early. I was literally waiting for Punis to walk through that door, but <laughs> she never came. The rest of the minigames are Home Run Derby, Mitch's Mess, Hallway Hunt, and Rico's Chili Works. Is this one just in every game now? It always feels the exact same. What I'm getting at is that there are no new minigames, which kind of sucks. Oh well. On day 5 we got a delivery service set up and a brand new mold, the Rocket Pop. I get a feeling Boomer is going to love that thing. By day 7 I was getting a perfect score on nearly every order. That honestly might be the quickest I've ever been able to nail down one of these games. After your first week the Summer Luau starts, featuring some cool new fruits and a pineapple shaped mold. It really makes me wonder what kind of stuff we'll get in the winter time too. I played for a little while longer, but you know how Papa's games are. I've really mentioned everything substantially new here, and you should really experience the rest for yourself anyways. 
No reason to spoil the whole game here. Well, now that I've gotten through a good chunk of the game, let's go through my thoughts. As always, the graphics are perfect, our favorite customers are all here, and the new ones are cool too. All the staples you come to expect from these games are here, just as always. If you like a feature from one of the previous games, it's still here, and the customization of the character and lobby area is the same as always too. There's really no point in complaining or praising these parts of the game, as all Papa's games are the same in that regard. What we really need to discuss is the stations and the paletas. I think the general concept is really great. You get to make such colorful treats that look awesome by the end. The gradients of the colors somehow always look great, no matter how strange the color combinations are. And I really enjoy that the topping station streamlines the process. In most games, you have to be super careful putting drizzle and individual items on top of your food, but here you just line up the angle to make it perfect every time. You still have to be very precise, but it takes significantly less time than most topping stations. Other than that initial problem I faced with the filling section, I really have no complaints. It's annoying to have to do it three separate times, but really not a big deal. And the chill station doesn't really matter. There's only one timer setting, so it's the same every single time. In the end, I really have one word to describe how I feel about this game. Bored. I know, I'm really sorry, but it's the honest truth. It's simplified your action town as much as possible, resulting in an extremely easy game to pick up, but a pretty bland game to continue playing. It reminds me a lot of Bakeria, another game that really oversimplified the topping section. It's satisfying, but it takes away your control. It's a game about going through the motions and nothing more. It kind of leaves me wondering why this came out two years after the last one. No new big changes, not even a new mini game. The only thing new here is the food you're preparing, and even that is just taking elements from the other games. If you're excited by the colorful treats you can create, if you're a Papa's completionist, or you just want to play another one of these because it's been so long, I'm sure you'll enjoy your time with it. It's a completely serviceable game. I really don't think anyone would hate this game either. There's really nothing to hate. And like I said, if Bakery is one of your favorites, I have a feeling you'll like this one too. But there are plenty of better games in the series, unfortunately. And while I didn't want to come to this conclusion, we're going to place Papa's Palateria in a mediocre B tier. Let me know if you tried the game and agree or disagree with my ranking. No shade to anyone who likes it, I can totally see why. Let me know if I should make more Papa's Games videos too, they're always fun. I worked very hard to get this video out as soon as I could for you all, so if you're feeling kind, I'd always appreciate some support on Patreon or becoming a member like all the names you see on screen now. It makes these videos possible and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you Leland, Patrick Byerjan, Hono Maki, Brightstreak, MD Switchy, Dolphin Rider H2O, Dojo Master, Crystal Creations, Lava Tain, Eduardo Santiago, Jasper TV, Keep, Omegon, Gall Guy, Daisy, It's Me Alley, and Jeff the Legend. When are they going to add a game where you make diaries so they can call it the really funny name? I've been waiting for so long, it's not fair! Oh, and also make Cupcake Eerie Deluxe please, I would love that very much, thank you! Papa seems so kind, until you realize he's left the key to the Palatair. You still have to be very precise, but it takes significant. You still have to be very precise, but it takes significantly less time than most time. You still have to be- You still have to be very precise, but it takes significant- you still have to be very precise, but it's still- You still have to be very precise, but it takes-